Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. You know what? I got two little examples for you. This shows whether you are really for real or whether you're talking out the side of your neck. Put your money where your mouth is, buddy. Now, let me share something with you. If I'm a diamond and instead of being an in, 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 uh, animate, ugh, what's the word I'm looking for? Instead of being immobile, I am, I, I'm able to move. I'm a moving diamond with arms and legs. Okay, so here I am a diamond, but nobody can see it. I can't see it because I have just turned into this rock. And somebody shines a light on me. And they shine a light on other diamonds around me. And I look around and I see how they glisten. And I say, ooh, I like that. I want to shine like that. And somebody tells me, you can. God can turn you into that. Really? He can? Well, turn me. Let me get to know this God. And you start going to him and start getting to know him and becoming familiarized. Well, once you start seeing the beauty of holiness, the beauty of God, the Bible says it is the love of God, the goodness of God leads us to repentance, his goodness. When you start recognizing how good he really is and you start wanting more and more of him, you start pursuing him like a woman that wants a facelift. She pursues the doctor. The doctor won't come and visit her house because the doctor doesn't even know her from Adam. She, he doesn't know who she is or that she wants any work done. So she has to make the first move. She has to go to his office. So here I am as a diamond. I'm going to the office to get my whole, my whole lift going on because I want to be brilliant, dazzling, and beautiful. So what do I do? I go in for treatment after treatment, cleansing after cleansing. They got to peel away stuff and do all kind of stuff and chip away the old rusty rocks and all of, all of the hard shell. They got to break away from me. They got to work all that off of me. That takes time. But guess what? I'm there with bells on my toes, even though it hurts because I want to be beautiful. I want to be gorgeous. I want to be dazzling. So I go and I go and I go. Money's not an object. Just tell me whatever. I will write the check because I want this. Just like some women and some of you men go for those facelifts and those hair implants. I want this. So I go. I pay the cost to be the boss. So what do I got to do? What's it going to cost me? Sin. Sin. You mean I got to give up my sex out of marriage? You mean I got to give up my right to cuss? To cuss somebody out when they get me mad? You mean I can't steal anymore? You mean I can't get drunk and gamble? Huh? Oh, boy. I want to dazzle like that. I'll do it. But you got to help me. You got to give me medication to help me do it. Because if you don't give me medication, I'm going to be, I'm going to mess up. And I don't want to mess up because I want to be beautiful like that. I want to dazzle. It's my little allegory. So hang with me. You know I got a crazy imagination. You're dealing with a nut here. Deal with it. All right. So here I am wanting to be a diamond. And I go, and I go, and I go, and I get my training, and I get my cleansing, and my buffing, and my chipping away, and all the reconditioning that I got to have done. And I'm giving this up, and giving that up, and losing my friends, and oh! And then one day, God holds a mirror up in front of me, and I look in the mirror. And I see a diamond, not a rock. It's a diamond. I look like Jesus. It's a diamond. I like that. I like the new me. I don't ever.
never want to be an old ugly rock again. Now, my point in saying that is that's the process of walking with God. Yes, it's a process. And the more you stick to the regimen, the quicker you change. And the sooner you connect with God during the process. And connecting with God makes it a thousand times easier to stick to the plan. Well, I hope that helps you understand what I'm talking about. Your commitment with God to become the beauty of holiness, to love his righteousness, to love his people, to enjoy his peace, the glow of his brilliance in your darkest hour. Oh, God shines in your dark. It, I'm telling you, I've seen him do it for me a whole lot of times. He has shown his love in my darkness to gird me up. I'm never alone when I go through trials. I run to that word, God, tell me, God. Cry like a big old baby and God just, boop, Roman so-and-so. 1 Corinthians so-and-so, Psalms, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. There it is. There's my medicine, my shot in the arm. Mm. See, when you experience God, there is no question of, is he real? When you experience God, there is no question of, does he love me? When you experience God, there is no question of, is he there? Has he abandoned me? Where has he gone? Does he hear my prayers? I know he hears my prayers. Whether I'm on top of my game or at the bottom, I know he hears my prayers. Because we're connected, baby. He's got me and I got him. And I refuse to let him go. The lover of my soul, the lifter up of my head, come on. You got to be kidding me. I'll be a total lunatic to give him up. There's nothing, nobody, no money, nothing that's worth giving him up for. Because everything else to me is not a reasonable facsimile. It's an unreasonable facsimile. Stupid compared to him. How do you feel? 